Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It means it's time for another live stream. Today is Wednesday, June 21st, 2023. And today we've got some packages. This is my first sponsored unboxing. It's not really a sponsored unboxing. I'll explain to you a little bit more later how this all works out. Um, but first, let's say hi to everyone listening on the podcast on the audio only version. Guys, it's getting hot out there. Hopefully you guys are staying hydrated and taking it easier on yourself as well. The paces aren't going to be the same at the same level of effort. So it's okay if your miles are slowing down just a little bit because it is hot. I had a really hot run today, but I set it up so that way um, it was an out and back. And I knew the other day I did it and it was downhill on the way out and then uphill on the way back. Today I flipped it around. So that way I started on the other side. So I went uphill and then downhill. And that was a lot nicer. So hopefully you can find ways to be kind to yourself too. And everyone watching this on YouTube later, but not live, welcome to the number one live stream to listen to while you're trying to figure out how early you can leave on Friday without anyone noticing. The answer is probably about like 2 p.m. right after live stream. That's a good time to be able to go. <laughs> I actually don't know if that's going to be a good time for you guys. So don't, don't take my word for it. But, you know, watch live stream and then take off. I mean, no, don't most places have some, do places have summer hours? I never had, I never like knew anyone that had summer hours like growing up in New Jersey. I don't know if that's a thing in New Jersey, but in the Midwest, everyone seems to have it so they can go to the lake on the weekend or go camping or whatever. So hopefully you guys got that and you can leave right after, right after live stream. But yeah. Um, all right. Adam's here. He says the box looked like it leaked. No, it didn't leak. It's just dirty. And that's just the way, um, the packaging is it it looks like um it's like mountains and forests like in the background here and so like that's why it looks dark like that it hasn't leaked it's just dirty and then there's a second package that i think i'm supposed to open at the same time but let's talk about this so um the way this works is that Kodiak reached out to me to be part of some campaign and it start. I think it starts today um, and it runs for like 10 days or whatever. And I'm assuming that you're going to see a lot of Kodiak content on your social feeds coming up in the next week or so. I'm actually not sure. Um, but they were like, we want to sit, we want you to be part of it and they're paying me to do it. So I was like, all right, here's some ideas that I have for it where I can incorporate Kodiak cakes into an Instagram reel. And I'm like, one of the things I'd probably do is I'd probably start off by tasting live. So if there's flavors I don't like, people are going to know. And I'm like, but you know, that's all right. I have strong preferences on flavors and some things I just don't like, but I feel like it's just funnier that way. So they were like, okay, cool. So I'm not really getting paid to unbox this stuff, but I kind of am because I need to have it for later. So it's kind of a sponsored post, but you know, I don't know, sponsored unboxings. I'm not necessarily against that for the live stream because it's as long as it's fun stuff that makes sense for you guys, at least then I don't have to pay for it. So that's kind of how we're going to go with it. Does that work for you guys? I don't know. Um, Dan, Dan Dalton says, uh, can someone translate this for a Brit, please? Yeah, so Kodiak Cakes, um, they make they started out making pancakes. And so like they're more it's more like camping food so people that are in the wilderness um, would tend to like it. Um, but then uh, at some... Oh, hold on, guys. My battery's running low. All right. So then from like um, people that were using it in the outdoorsy places then some of those people happened to be runners and then runners started liking it. And then it became like runner food somehow. I don't think it intended to be runner food, but it became runner food and the pancakes are really good. There are some of them are really high protein count as well. So they're good, like recovery food and they're tasty and they're usually pretty easy. It's kind of like just add water, maybe add an egg and then stir it and cook it kind of thing. Um, and now they have a whole wide variety of products. And that's, I think what some of the stuff that's in here today. So uh, it's not cakes today, but they started out making pancakes. So that's where it comes from. Yeah, Cobalt Blue has a much more succinct answer. Kodiak cakes are protein and rich pancakes. Um, we've had Kodiak on the live stream before during the pandemic. Uh, we bought 
they have like a uh, power cups. I forget what they were called, but basically you just add water, you stir it up and then you microwave it for a minute. And it makes like kind of like a, it's, it's in a cup, but it's like a muffin and it's a pancake. It's like a muffin shape. Cause it's like a ball of, but it's a pancake. And uh, my, my younger daughter actually really likes them. So yeah. So we've had them before too. Uh, Matthias says it, it was, and it is gym bro food too. Uh, probably because of the high protein content. That makes sense. Nice. And Cobalt Blue says, uh, you know, they also make oatmeal cups, just add hot water. I have seen a lot of the oatmeal cups at my local grocery stores. You know. Um, yeah. So <laughs> Dan's like, thanks, gang. <laughs> I think I feel like that's a pretty good explanation of what the brand is. So yeah. All right. Mm. Dan Zlotnick says, hi, first time on the live stream. Long time podcast listener from Jerusalem. Says, question about the Takumi Sen with a moderately wide foot. Do I size up or will it run long? Thanks. Great video today. That's because today's video is about the Adios 8. And um, I'm trying to be as generous to the shoe as possible because I do think that there are differences to it from the Takumi Sen that I think some people will really appreciate and would like be like, yes, I love the Adios 8. And no, I don't want the Takumi Sen at all. But for me, uh, I'm the opposite way. I, I'll take the Takumis in any day. And I really can't think of a situation where I'd be like, mm, the Takumis is just not right, but the Adios 8 is perfect, you know? So I think that the shoe can kind of disappear and I wouldn't be mad. There are some strong opinions, mostly stuff that I already discussed in the video. And it's like, okay, I see people saw the title and they clicked on it and then they were like, uh, I'm going to put in my two cents. Um, but this is a different kind of question in terms of a moderately wide foot size up for the Takumi Sen. If it's moderately wide, I think you're fine. The Takumi Sen also has a pretty nice fit to it. I don't think it's, it's super tight in terms of um, racing shoes go. It does feel a little bit longer than it needs to be. Um, but, you know, it doesn't ever bother me. So I feel like it's a good size. Um I would say with the same size that you normally wear. But then again, I'm guessing if you're a moderately wide foot, sometimes you go up, sometimes you go down. I don't think you need to go up. I would go with your normal Adidas running shoe size. Mm. All right. Um, Kyle says, does anyone remember Light Strike? Just plain Light Strike or the SL20? The SL20 is nice. Just regular Light Strikes in the um, at a zero SL2. SL as well. Um, so like that's still here. It's still, and I, I did you know, believe in the run. They hate it. They absolutely hate it. And I don't really understand why they hate it so much. I think that they've seen some of the worst implementations of light strike though. Cause isn't that what's in that Odistar, that big one. I didn't run in that shoe. I could tell from a mile away. That wasn't going to be a good one. Um, but yeah, so I think they ran in that one. And after that, they were like, we don't like Light Strike anymore. It's kind of how it feels. Um, but yeah, I like the light. I, I love the SL20. And then there was like the SL20. And it they, they never called it version two, but I would call it 20.2. And that seemed to catch on for a little bit. Um, and then they came out with an SL20 and they called it 0.3. But it was also just called SL20 as well. I feel like, each iteration, like it became more and more of a price point shoe. So it was never really as good as the first one. Uh, and that's why I'm really happy that they came out with an Adizero SL because I feel like that's where you should go if you'd like the original SL20. Um, all right. Daniel Burton says, I got second in my age last Saturday, 60 to 69, 815 pace. Great job, Daniel. Yeah! No, not stop yeah! the sound. I want, I want this sound. Yeah. Good job, Daniel. Sorry about, I see I pushed the wrong buttons. But that's a great job. Hitting the podium in the age group. Love to see it. Um, videos wants to know, who was the marathon vlogger who loved Kodiak Cakes? He won a bunch of smaller marathons. D-Money or something? No, that was Mako show. Chris Mako. I think about him all the time. Anytime I see the Kodiak um, <laughs> logo, the bear, I think about Mako show. And for a while, I would just yell Mako show at races to see if anyone would respond. <laughs> I really like that guy. And then he like, he used to work at Twitter and then he did like YouTube videos for a while. 
And then I think he stopped doing that and he got like a regular job. He got married. I still see him on Strava every once in a while. He's still running. But like, yeah, he was, he had his whole family involved. His dad was there. He would always yell at his dad to make sure he was filming in landscape and not portrait. <laughs> it was so funny. I miss Chris Mako. All right. With that, let's get to the Kodiak cakes. Uh, let's. I'm I'm so hungry right now with my kids' um, day uh, day camps that they're doing right now. Like my entire morning is off, and I'm just not eating right, and I'm starving. So I can't wait to eat these. Um, I know what's in this package first, so I feel like I should probably like this is going to be more iffy than this. But I'm hungry, and I want to eat something that I know is going to be good. So let's start with the Kodiak cakes. They're not cakes. It's a new product. If it's what I think it is, if I'm if I'm remembering it correctly, um, this is a brand new, I think it's like a new product category for them. I think that's why they're doing like a media campaign with it. So this should be pretty exciting, but I could be wrong. It could be something that you guys have been eating for a long time, but in either event, it's brand new to me. And we got a lot of boxes in here. This is nice. Ooh, look at this. Box full of boxes of Kodiak cakes. And just dump them out here. We have crunchy granola bars. All right. Let's see what flavors we got here. We got two two boxes of peanut butter. Are these all boxes of peanut butter? Oh, my goodness. These are all boxes of peanut butter. That's a little unfortunate because I don't really like to have peanut butter in the house because of my daughter. But we'll try them down here and make sure we clean up before she comes down here. They sent me five boxes of one flavor. Interesting. Maybe there's no other flavors, but it's got 10 grams of protein per serving. That's really good for a, um, a granola bar, especially a crunchy one. Are you guys team crunchy or team soft? I like crunchy granola bars the best. Let's see, 23 grams of carbohydrates uh, for two bars in the pack. It's going like, what is that other one? Nature Valley, whatever. 23 grams of carbohydrates, 10 grams of protein, 170 milligrams of salt. So, and 10 grams of fat. So, pretty nice. I like those numbers. Packaging looks nice. Got the bear on the side. <laughs> the bear, it just looks really funny. The bear growling. I don't know why it's making me giggle. It doesn't make me giggle when I see it this way, but when I see it like all colorized like this, I just feel like I want that on a giant sweatshirt that I could buy on Amazon. Maybe having the bear like howl at the moon or something. All right. So they're crunchy. That's good. Mm, that's really good. I haven't had a peanut butter flavored thing in a long time. Mmm, that's tasty. And I'm so hungry today. There's something that's like really pops and crunchiness at the end, the end in there. I'm trying to figure out what that is. Mm, it says, there's whole grain rolled oats, cane sugar, wheat protein isolate, peanut butter, pea protein concentrate with tapioca starch. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. There's almond butter in here, too. So that's nice. Hmm. This is good. I like this. <laughs> Where's the milk? Yeah, I, I can't talk right now. There's a lot of peanut butter and <laughs> chocolate. <Dylan is like, laughs> <ASMR. laughs> it says it even sounds dry. Nope. <laughs> it's a little bit on the dry side, but it's a crunchy granola bar. And I like crunchy granola bars. This is, I like this. Louis says, would this be a good pre-meal before a marathon? Yeah, I would like this. I would like to see this in some other flavors. 
I'm gonna see if I can find some at the store and some other flavors of this stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just like crunchy granola bars. If you like the crunchy granola bars, then I feel like this is a good alternative. It has more protein, I think, than the other kinds. I'll have to double check on that, but I do like it. So it's good. Daniel Burton wants to know where they're made. Uh, they're distribute, created and distributed by Kodiak Cakes out of Park City, Utah. But I don't know that it tells you where they're made, where like where like they're like where are they cooked? You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Doesn't say. But yeah, good. Mm. <laughs> sounds like you're walking through frozen snow, and Calvin only says it sounds like you're running on a gravel path. Yeah. Um, Stephanie says Chicago announced three of the women pros headlining the marathon this October. Excited to see who else will join them. Stephanie, who did they announce? I didn't see that news. Hmm. Tim Yasaki says, this is a first time listening live. I usually catch the podcast and was going to challenge you to whistle after eating the Kodiak bars with no water. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be not great. That would be very hard to clean up um, from a allergen perspective but yeah all right richard wilson says the website said they have chocolate chip maple brown sugar and cookie butter all in the crunchy variety um i'm down i'm gonna have to go to the, i'm gonna have to go find a place that sells them there's a grocery store around here that like reminds me of like before whole foods was bought by amazon um i i bet you they i bet you they got it they have more different varieties of melatonin gummies then most stores have varieties of milk. It's one of those kinds of stores. But like they also sell like, you know, wild caught salmon, fresh veggies, you know, that it's a grocery store. But yeah. Mm. And Richard Wilson said there's several chewy var varieties, including s'mores and double chocolate. Double chocolate sounds nice. Hmm. All right. I'm going to have to make a trip to the grocery store. Stephanie says that Emily Sisson, Ruth Chapin Gedich, and Sifa San are all going to be running. Whoa. That, that already is a pretty good lineup. I think that Chicago is going to be pretty intense in terms of who's all going to be there this year. I think this is a time where everyone wants to run flat fast, at least for people in the, in the American field for trials purposes so i think that chicago's field is going to be stacked and miguel says the shoes are back on the shelf they are they're all back because i did the adios 8 video um tomorrow i'll be shooting a different video and i'll take other shoes off the shelf so you guys will have to see if you can guess what shoe i'm talking about tomorrow mm. and mark arlt says hassan Stefan Hassan is apparently running the world championship six weeks before Chicago too. Interesting. It also makes me wonder if um, it's one of those things where sometimes the athletes will do these international um, marathons where they get the chance to wear the, the, their nation's kit and then they will kind of DNF. I'm not saying that she's going to do that, but I've seen a couple of different races now where they're like, yeah, like they, they do it. Um, so they get like kind of like stay in good standing with their track federations or whatever. It's a weird thing. <laughs> These are really good. But they are very dry. Kevin wants to know, is Houston too late for OTQ? Yeah, I think though, someone was telling me that I thought that CIM was the absolute last race that you could run. But I th have heard other people tell me that um, Valencia would also count. Valencia is usually the week after 
um, CIM. And so, so I don't really know, but I usually think, I think the number is like 90 days before the event, I think is usually how the rule is written. I think that's the window. So I don't know. CJS says like DNFing in your country's uniform helps you stay in good standing. Yeah, it's better than saying no. I don't, and I don't also don't know if it's necessarily standing in good standing with their country's track federation or with their sponsors. I'm not exactly sure, but I was watching the Doha, the marathon in Doha that one year. They started it at midnight. And Bennett, it was a, a marathon in the desert. It was so hot that they got as many people as they could to swallow thermometers, like basically like biometric devices, so they could study what happens to the human body when you run a marathon in the desert. But even though they started out at midnight, most of the people in that race, I'd say, I want to say like a third of the people in the race DNF'd. And they explained it to, to the, as like, it's like a monetary thing where like, you don't get a lot of money for competing in like world championships, but I don't know. I, I forget the exact way it was explained. All right. Okay. <laughs> KB88922 says, would you be comfortable eating those in a library? I don't know. That'd be pretty funny, though, if, if it was loud enough that it bothered other people. I can't believe they sent me five boxes of peanut butter. I don't know if they meant to do that or not. But anyway. Oh, wait. Matt just says Valencia is the same day as CIM this year. It is? That's bizarre. I had no idea. Interesting. Frank wants to know, Am I feeling actually trained up for Peachtree or am I basically half sending it? Um, so I've done two four by four, no, 12 by 400 meter workouts at 5K pace. I'll probably have one or two more, maybe three more workouts in between now and then. I've got a shoe that I'm testing. It's under embargo, even though everyone has seen it on the internet. Megan Murray even posted about it yesterday. And I messaged her about it. I'm like, I don't know why everyone gets to talk about this shoe, but they emailed me and told me it's under embargo to the 29th. But I'll do a couple more workouts um, getting ready for it. I'm not really like, it's going to be in the summertime on a hilly course. So um, for a 10K, so a distance I don't like and temperatures that usually defeat me um, in terrain, I find disagreeable. <laughs> it's not a PR attempt. Um, but I'll sharpen up a little bit, you know, to get ready for it. So I think peach tree will be a good time to start real marathon training. So it's kind of like race your way to fitness, I guess. It'll just kind of be like a good barometer, um, or like a dipstick. See how I'm at, see how I'm doing, see where I'm at kind of thing, you know? Shewan with Cody wants to know what city is the Olympic trials in this time around? The marathon trials are in Orlando. And so I've talked to a couple athletes now about getting ready for the trials. And they're all like, you know, we're not really sure what the course is going to be like yet. So it makes it hard to kind of choose a fall half marathon. I'm like, it's Orlando. Like, I can't even envision a place in Orlando that would be hilly. Maybe I'm wrong. But like, the, the hints that the organizing group, what is it? It's like a running store that also does a lot of events. They do the Orlando Half Marathon, not the Disney one, not the Disney stuff, but like the Orlando Half Marathon. They're saying like they're gonna, they, know a, they'll, they know a route. It'll rely heavily on their Orlando Half Marathon route that will showcase what the city is other than just Disney World and the theme parks. And like based on that, I was talking with Drew Whitcomb about it. So yeah, it's going to be very flat. So I think it's going to be flat, which is interesting because like Paris is not going to be flat, but it's also going to be in the, in August. 
and uh, there's going to be, I think it's really going to be like mostly flat with one giant hill that you have to do a couple of times, I think. Right. So, but I, I would, you know, I don't think that the Olympic trials hopefuls or Olympic trials competitors need to really start honing in now in terms of what they need to do for the race. So I'm not super upset that there isn't a route announced, but it may, you know, to the extent that it helped people pick fall marathons. You know, I think you kind of could be like, it's probably going to be a flat, fast course. So pick a flat, fast course if you want to train and get ready for that. But mm, I'm not too mad that it's not out yet. Mm. Yeah, CV76 says you're going to have to run up the Disney castle on the hill. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, can you imagine if they just use like the uh, dopey challenge route? I think people would be really mad if they did that. Kyle says, you know, hey, Orlando has bridges that gain 30 feet. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, they could do that. Um, when I did Clearwater Half Marathon, there was a couple of significant bridges. I mean, not that they're not huge. You know, it's not like running mags. You know, it's not 8,300 feet of elevation and like, you know, 16 feet, 16%, 10% grade, you know, but um, for marathon speed, those are big inclines. So it could be, but um, difficult. I know Orlando's geography is very different than Clearwater's, but um, yeah, it could be, but um, things like Mount Roosevelt in Chicago, it's just up a bridge, but you feel, you feel it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what the course actually looks like. I, I, I'm super curious. I just can't wait to see it. But I just feel like USATF always announces things super late for no real reason. And so I feel like we're not going to know until like, I'll be, I'll be surprised if we know before New York Marathon. I feel like after everyone has run their fall marathons, then we'll know what the, the route's going to be. Global thinks it's going to be humid. You know, who was I talking with? Oh, I was talking with Dakota Linworm yesterday after a live stream. And she was like, she's she's getting ready for a humid race. So she's going to do humidity training rather than altitude training over the winter. That interview will be up hopefully in the next couple of days. Um, but uh, I was like, it's going to be like the first, it's going to be basically January in Orlando. It's not going to be that humid. You know, but I mean, I guess it could be a freakishly warm day. So I don't know. Mm. Larry Lons thinks it's going to be loops for Orlando. Yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised if it were not. I think just from an organizational span, standpoint, too, it makes it easier for them to set up tables. If there's loops, um, there's less that they have to close down if there's loops. Um, and it's better for fans too. I'm starting to really think that like, you know, everyone talks about how it's so great that you get to line up on the same course that Kipchoge runs and all that stuff. But I'm like, people, I, I think that if you're really serious about turning it into a spectator sport and not just a participatory sport, not that there's anything wrong with either one, but like people are like, how do you make more people watch? Well, if you want to make more people watch, you got to make it so that people could see you. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I like NASCAR, one of the many reasons why NASCAR in the United States is much more popular than Formula One. You just see the car more often. <laughs> I think that's a big part of it, you know? So. Mm See, PJ says, remembering how I felt in the last 400 meters of CIM has me absolutely dreading Mount Roosevelt. It's really not that bad. You know what makes it bearable is that that's one of the loudest parts of the course. People are literally like willing you up that hill. So it's it's not it's not terrible. It's not terrible. And then as soon as you are done with the hill, you look left and you can see the finish. So it's right there. All right. Let's get to this other package. Um. Yeah, I don't think this is Kodiak Cakes, so it'll be interesting to see what's in here. Now, my communications with the PR company made it sound like they weren't going to be sending me this. 
but it's here. So let's take a look. Un unmarked box inside the packaging. Let's see what's inside. I, I really don't know. If this is what I think it is, I'm not sure how much I'm going to like eating this. It's a good thing that I'm hungry. Hungry is Hunger is the best sauce. But we'll see. There's wood shavings in here, though. For packaging. I don't know if that's like a marketing thing or if they're always going to send it like that. But what we have here is more flavors of untapped. Let's get, the, see if we get some focus. There we go. See that trick? Works. Put your hand behind it. So we've got a couple of different flavors here. This will be really interesting. Hopefully there's more than one of each flavor. So I can test one now and then eat, eat some more later. But we'll see how many of these I can actually stomach in terms of like a cereal test. S-E-R-I-L. All right, we've got pure Vermont maple syrup. I think there's a couple of these. I mean, is this just syrup in a thing? In a tube? Syrup in a tube? Is that really what we got here? Um, I don't think I'm going to try out these flavors on camera because there's a lot. Then we've got coffee, salted raspberry, salted citrus. I don't know, guys. And then salted cocoa. This feels like it's going to be good. So they tell you interesting facts on the front of all of them. Um, the salted citrus one has 100 milligrams of sodium. That's a good number. The salted raspberry has 60 milligrams. This sounds disgusting. Salted raspberry. Coffee sounds great. 27 milligrams of caffeine. I could go with a little bit more. And then salted cocoa just says uh, 60 milligrams sodium. So that's a good number. So, all right. Where should we go with this? Uh, Frank says I should put the syrup on the granola bar. That would soften it up a little bit. Um, I don't know. Let's try. I've had the untapped maple syrup like gel packets before. This is different packaging than what I remember. So that'll be interesting. Um, let's start. Let's start with the salted cocoa. I feel like that's going to be a winner. I'm not going to eat this whole thing because I want to try a bunch of these. And that's otherwise it's going to make me sick if I eat too many. But salted cocoa untapped pears, decadent cocoa with pure Vermont maple syrup for a delightful taste. A hint of sea salt accentuates cocoa notes while providing electrolyte replenishment. So as far as the electrolytes, 60 milligrams of salt. Um, and it says, what else is in here? Magnesium, zinc, manganese, riboflavin, thiamine, potassium. Uh, so yeah. Let's give it a try. I'm, I'm kind of, kind of stalling a little bit. Calvin says, Cody, you eat the best flavor first or save it for last. I'm going to go with the, what I think is going to be. It doesn't always work out this way, but I'm going to start with what I think is going to be a good flavor. Put some ones I don't think I'll like in the middle and then end with one that I hope I'll like. Start with the salted cocoa. I think I'm going to like this one. This thing tears really nicely, though. I'll tell you that. You want to see like what it looks like? It's very thin. That's delicious. That I want to, I'm going to put that on a pancake. That's really good. I almost ate the whole thing, but I'm going to try a bunch of these and I'm going to have a sugar overload if I do that. Salted cocoa is really good. Mm, all right. Next. I kind of got it everywhere. Everything's sticky. Um, salted citrus. All right, this one, for some reason, is not tearing off as cleanly. I hate it when that happens. There we go. This is very confusing. Um, it's confusing because then there's maple at the end of it all. Uh, yeah, I don't like this. It's not terrible. It's very weird. It's, um, each of these is only is, a, is an ounce of liquid. That is a, it's not a terrible flavor, <laughs> but it's not my favorite. Uh, it's like if you squeezed a lime, like you wouldn't ever squeeze a lime on your pancakes, right? I, I feel like someone did that to me here. 
and it's a little bit annoying. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dark X says, put it on a Kodiak bar. <laughs> Um, and Vanessa Martinez says it's an ASMR kind of day. I guess so. Uh, Matt Legrand, what's going on? Matt says, ouch, my diabetes is hurting watching this. Yeah. Uh, and AJ doesn't like the shape of the packets. They are going to be a little bit long, but you know what? I think this will work well. In, and here's what I think they're thinking. If you've got front packs where the, your soft bottles would go, this is the right size. It fits right in and then you could pull it out. And then you can pull it out nice and easy. So I, I think that's where they're going with these. I don't think that they're necessary. Their, their target market isn't going to be people trying to run a sub three. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But I think it's more for people that are going to be out there for a really long time, hours, and are looking for places to stash their gels in their pack. And I feel like the long shape would actually really help. That's my thinking. I guess I could ask. I should probably ask. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, David, what shoe would you pair the cocoa with? <laughs> I would pair the, I, I would pair it with the pair of the Tripuco Max. It's a nice, chill, easy day. You know what? I was just thinking though, as much as this is a joke, I was thinking that like I wish there were some sort of way that I could bring coffee with me in my pack when I'm running. Like I'd love. Like I'm, you know what? I'm sure people do this, right? Does anyone do this? But I'd want it to be hot. I'd want to be able to run up a mountain, have coffee at the top, and then run down. How do I do that? You know what I mean? I feel like the closest thing you could do. Well, there is a coffee flavor coming up, so we'll, let's let's hold on to that thought. Let's hold on to that thought. So we'll try that in just a second. Ah. <sighs> Salted raspberry. This one is also known that I'm, I think this one's going to be the worst. I think it's going to be the worst by far. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that, but cheers. Ugh. Ugh. It's a nice raspberry <laughs> flavor. Um, it finishes better than it starts. In the beginning, I'm just like, I don't know what's coming in here. Um, it tastes like if you... Uh, We've talked about this before. What are those called? Thumbprint cookies? Those little shortbread cookies with a little disc of jellyish mater fruit material in the in the middle. It kind of tastes like if you melted that stuff down into liquid form, that's kind of what it is. It's very, very sweet. It's probably like the sweetest thing I've ever eaten. I don't like it. It says salted and it's got 60 milligrams of sodium in here, but it's just way too sweet for me. I already have a problem with like things being too sweet, uh, especially for really long adventures. Uh, I don't think that that would not work well for me. Ugh. <laughs> Martha says, yuck, it's not a promising endorser. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Adam says, you know, you got to do a hundred miler every eight session is a buffet. I think I get, I feel like at this point, I really just want to do a, a longer ultra just to make a video about all the eight stations. I mean, I guess if there's mountains, I'll, I'll film the views, but I really just want to talk about the food <laughs> or maybe I just need to better. yet, I should just go as media to an event and go from eight station to eight station and kind of like film what different other people want to eat. I know what I would want to eat, but you know, um, Frank says for my coffee needs, he's put the thermos in the back of the vest with the water in the front. You don't think that that thermos is going to bounce around too much and, and start to become a problem. Cause if that'll work, I think I would like that a lot. I even just think on a lot of runs in Iowa, you know, at the halfway point, watch the sun come up over the corn, have some coffee. It'd be really buggy. But it'd be it'd be nice. It'd be nice. Mm. Yeah, Eric says you could take cold brew in your Camelback, but it wouldn't be hot. Yeah, I yeah I don't know. I'm not a huge cold brew person. I like my coffee hot. Like usually like when I go to buy coffee and they're like, do you want that hot or cold? It throws me off when they ask me that. I'm like, why would you ask that? It'd be like if you asked, it's like if you went to a late night pizza place and you're like, let me get two slices of cheese. 
and they were like, do you want that hot or cold? And you'd just be like, what do you, what do you mean? That's how I feel about coffee. It doesn't even make sense to me sometimes when people drink it cold. My wife drinks iced coffee from time to time. Uh, Ranks you Q&A. Where's the button? Yeah! <laughs> uh, Sam's question is, hey, Co, if you had to choose between Adazero SL for $95 or the Fort Ride Energy 5 for 60 what would you say? I'm a newer runner getting first-time shoes. Uh, I might go with the uh, Fort Ride Energy 5. Cause I feel like that's a little bit of a softer shoe. Plus at 60 bucks, you know, you could take that extra $35 that you would have spent on the Adazura SL and get yourself another pair of running shorts or another running shirt. You know what I mean? So like if you're newer and you don't got a lot of stuff, you know, just go get another cheap running shirt. So, so it's just, you get one more day in between you having to do laundry. So that's kind of what I would do. Even for the same price, if they were both $95, I, I, I might go with the at 95. I might mm, the Adazero SL, I, I personally like it more, but I think the Energy 5 is a little bit more versatile. You could use it. More kinds of people can use it for diff more kinds of runs. So that's where I think I'd probably go with it. Mm, all right. Let's go to the next one. Uh, I'm not going to do the, the pure maple syrup one because I think it's just syrup, syrup in a bag. All right, so we don't need to do that. I'll save that one for later. Or do I need to do that? Do we need to do it? All right. Maple syrup. I got like jars of maple syrup. We got lots of maple syrup. I got daughters. We got young kids. We eat waffles almost every day in our house. Although we usually have Nutella on them. But we got lots of maple syrup. Let's try this stuff. Does it just taste like maple syrup or is it thinner? I have a feeling it's going to be thinner. Let's see. It's a little bit thinner than the, you know, the grade A amber I got upstairs, but let's see how it tastes. It tastes like maple syrup. It tastes like fake maple syrup. It says USDA organic. It's tasty. There's a, I don't know, maybe it's because there's only five milligrams of salt in it, 25 grams of sugar. There's some, maybe I'm tasting the packet. I don't know. It doesn't taste like just maple syrup, but it's definitely like maple syrup. It's really nice. It kind of is like, um, it kind of reminding me of Stroop waffle. If I were, if someone was like, hey, what's the flavor of this? Guess. I'd be like, Stroop waffle. Because I wouldn't ever guess just maple syrup. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Louis said fake maple syrup. We heard that go. I don't it doesn't doesn't taste doesn't taste like the stuff that I have in the jar upstairs. That's all. You know, I don't know. Um Sam says, Thanks so much for the advice. I'm literally so new. What shirt shirt or shorts should I get? Sorry for asking you your videos on the topic. No, don't worry about it, Sam. Um uh, that's why that's why the chat's here. Uh I would say for shorts or shirts, I buy like if you're st straight up beginning. Um, a brand that I find is very reasonably priced and works out well for both seasoned and new runners is Bayleaf, B-A-L-E-A-F. They kind of make like kind of copycat clothes a little bit. So a lot of it sometimes looks like Adidas clothes, um, but sometimes they don't have stripes on it. I usually go with those, but that's a brand that they make pretty decent running shorts, get something with a liner in it. Um, and then they make decent running shirts. I usually just go with like solid colored shirts. Um, nothing too crazy. So that way, you know, if someone sees you running in it a bunch of times a week, they're not gonna be like, Hey, is that like the third time you wore that shirt this week? You know? So that's kind of how I start off. They're usually really, really cheap. Uh, they probably won't last you forever, but it's a great way to get started as you're starting to build a running wardrobe. So <laughs> Kyle says Kodiak will not be back as a sponsor. <laughs> you know? I'm telling you, uh, calling it like I see it. All right, let's get to these last, this last one. This was one I think I've been saving this one. I'm really hoping that this is going to be the best one. Um, coffee flavored syrup. I mean, this is, this could be the answer. What I was, what I was talking about. I want to, it's not hot, but I want, just want to drink. I just want to drink more coffee. I just want to drink coffee all day. That's really what it comes down to, but cheers. 
That's nice. That's really nice. Have you guys ever put maple syrup in your coffee? It's not bad. This is tasty. This is my favorite one. All right. So here's the order. Coffee, salted cocoa, just regular maple syrup. And then there's these other salted ones. I'll put them in this other pile over here, away from these other ones that I like. I think you guys get what I'm going at. <laughs> uh, Sam says, surely this is a lot of energy, right? Yeah, it's a lot of sugar. It's a I mean, I, I didn't eat all of any one of these. So like I've probably eaten just two gels. So like the equivalent of like, um, I don't know, like a little bottle of soda. You know, you never get those. So that's about, I feel like, um, how much sugar is in these. So, yeah. You know, over the weekend, I did have a, like a, like a, what do you call them? Like 20 ounces of a uh, root beer. It had 63 grams of sugar in it. Um, and I was like, oh, this will be a nice pick me up. Uh, turns out it was the opposite. I don't know if it's because I'm in my mid forties now and I'm just old and I can't handle that much sugar when I'm not running a marathon. But uh, after I had that bottle of uh, root beer, I was so sleepy. Like I, I, I didn't have a sugar high. I just went straight to sugar crash. <laughs> having all that. Um, this is nicer here. Uh, this is like, uh, I feel nice and perked up. It's really nice. Um, so go with the flavors that are tasty. Uh, if you, if you see these, they're, they're different. They're very thin. It's like having, you're just bringing like a packet of liquid with you. So some people are going to like that. I do. Um, some people are going to hate it. Like if you love goose, then you're probably not going to like how the consistency of these. But if you think goose are like eating toothpaste, give these a try. You know. All right. Uh, one last question. Then I got to go. Um, Kyle wants to know any update on schedule for Peachtree? Uh, Saturday, Saturday night, seven o'clock at one of the stores. I don't remember which one. Um, things are supposed to be finalized this week. We're going to do a live stream live 7 PM, I believe is the time for that. So, uh, and there'll be like hanging out time afterwards. I think there'll be some snacks and beverages, I think afterwards. So plan on that. I'll be, uh, doing a live stream live with Drew Whitcomb and then two other guests. So that should be really fun. I don't know if they're going to be on. So it would be like the four of us at once or if like everyone's rotating in. I'm not exactly sure. I, I think it might depend on how how big the store is uh, and what the spacing is like there. So we're trying to figure it out. So that'll definitely be Saturday night. And then I think we're doing a sh we're doing a shakeout run. I haven't heard any more details on that. I think that's going to be Sunday. Because the race is Tuesday, right? Two, so I don't know. I don't know actually know when the shakeout run is going to be, but um, we're working on details, but there'll be stuff over the weekend. So even if you're not running the race, come hang out. A lot of runners will be around. We'll do some fun stuff, you know? Um, yeah. And then I don't know what else will be. I think I'm, I'm staying with Drew. So we're going to be out in the suburbs. I don't know what else is going on really. So we'll figure it out as we get a little bit closer. I think we got what two weekends, not this weekend. Not next weekend, the following weekend, right? So we got a little bit of time, but the Saturday this Saturday night, if you're not doing anything Saturday night and you're in Atlanta, let's hang out. I think there's going to be 70 seats, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm also worried of like, oh, I don't know if we're going to fill 70 seats. So Kyle, if you're around, I'd appreciate it if you can help fill a seat, bring some friends. All right. Um, okay. That's going to be it for today, guys. Tomorrow... Um, we're going to have uh, a fun game. We're not going to have a guest, even though it's Thursday. The guest will be Friday. It'll be Emily Heller on Friday. But tomorrow I'm going to start a new segment. It's inspired by sponsored unboxings. But I think it's I think you're really going to like it. Hopefully you guys will like it. So I'll, I'll tell you about that new segment tomorrow when we do that. So same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully I see you then. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.